Hello everyone, I'm Vibhur Singh and today we'll be discussing the 16th problem of the CP31 sheet under the 1300 rated parameter. So as you can see, this is the CP31 sheet and the 1300 rated problems have been selected. And this is the 16th problem, box fitting. You are given n rectangles, each of height 1, each rectangle's width is a power of 2. That is, it can be represented as 2 raised to x for some non-negative integer x. You are also given a two-dimensional box of width w. Note that w may or may not be a power of 2. However, w is at least as large as the width of the largest rectangle. You have to find the smallest height of this box such that it is able to fit all the given rectangles. It is allowed to have some empty space left in this box after fitting all the rectangles. You cannot rotate the given rectangles to make them fit into the box. So, and also no two rectangles should overlap. Okay, so this is what is given to you in the problem. Now, what does it mean? Let's look at this first example of 5, 16 and 1, 2, 8, 4, 8. Okay, so we have 5, 16 and then we have 1, 2, 8, 4, 8. Uh, 1, 2, 8, 4 and 8. Okay, so basically... 5 is your number of boxes, 16 is the width of the bigger box or the container that you have, width of the container. And then these are the width of each of the box and each of these boxes have height 1. So it's like a box of 1, 1 cross 1, then 1 cross 2, like this is 1, this is 2, this is 1, this is 1 for the first box and this is the second box, like that. So these are the boxes that are given to you and you're given a large container of width 16 and you have to find that how can I fit these boxes in the container without rotating them such that the height is minimized okay so in the minimum height of this container of 16 length okay so if this is 16 let's say i put my first block of length 8 over here then i put another block of length 8 over here then i put a block of length 4 over here a block of length 2 and then a block of length 1 something like this okay so 8 8 4 2 1 all the five blocks are fitted and the overall height i would require is 2 so the output for this example will come 2 and that is what is given that 2 is the output for this example. So that is what we have to find the minimum height for which we can arrange or minimum height minimum height for which any arrangement of these boxes can be fitted into our container. So let's discuss the expected time complexity now. You are given that number of test cases are till 10 days to 3 and then you are given n is still 10 days to 5, w is still 10 days to 9 and wi in go till 10 days to 6, it's also given that sum of n does not exceed 10 days to 5. Okay, so since we have the constraint on sum of n, we can just use it directly that n goes to 10 days to 5. Okay, and width our w capital W can go till 10 days to 9, small w that is width of the boxes can go till 10 days to 6. So although they are not very important because we may mostly won't form solutions in these complexities right and then we know one second in code forces approximately a corresponds to 10 days to 8 operations so anything of this uh, sort of order of n order of n log n or order of n log w will work or n plus small w can also work but anything of the sort of order of n square or order of n into w this will give us TLE irrespective of we use small w or capital W for this. So that's it for the expected time complexity discussion. Now let's try to form a solution to the problem. So we are given that each of the blocks or each of the boxes small w is a power of 2. Okay, each of them is a power of 2. Now you have to arrange them in some container which can be of any size, right? So First thing that comes to mind is why can't we just, why shouldn't we just put them or why can't we just arrange them greedily that is take the largest box that I can fill currently and put it in the container. Okay. So let's say I'm looking at, okay, at height one, how much can I fit? So at height one, initially let's say I have 10 length and I have one box of eight size, another box of four size and another box of two size. Okay. So first I'll say is I'll take size eight first, then I'll take size 2 over here and then I'll take size 4 later basically whatever can fit that is 8 can fit in 10 initially so I'll put 8 here 
then four cannot fit here, two can fit here, so I'll put two as the next. But if instead of ten, if instead of ten, I had the overall width as twelve, then I'll put eight here and four here, right? So I can just I'm just taking a greedy idea that whatever can fit is what I'll try to fit, right? And there can be extra space left as well in each of the levels. Now, will this idea work or will this idea not work? That is the main question, right? So my intuition is that this idea should work, and why should it work? See, we have our container. Let's say we don't use this idea. So I have some more boxes over here. Let's say I have another box of four, another box of two, another box of two, something like this. Okay. So I have we have multiple boxes. Now let's say my overall width of the container is ten. Let's keep it as ten itself. Okay. Now I want to say that okay, I won't choose the greedy idea. That is, I won't put this eight first. I'll try to use some other combinations. Okay. So let's say I put the block of size four first, okay, right. Now after this next block I can put is either I put a block of size four and then a block of size two, right. This is one option that I can have. Another thing that I can do is I can put a block of size two, another block of size two, and then another block of size two, something like this, right. And this is the entire summation becomes ten, and I've exhausted this space, right. Now what we'll notice is. Irrespective, if we put it two first, two later on, like another way would be if I put the two at the uh, four at the end, right? So basically, something like I put a block of size two over here, and then I put a block of size four at the end. Now, what we can see is since we have only powers of two, since we have only powers of two, I can always replace the lower blocks, lower size blocks with the higher size block. And what do I mean by that? See. Irrespective of how I arrange four to four, or if I arrange four and three times two, or if I arrange four, four, and two, I can say that instead of having this four two two or this four four or over here this four and this four, basically shifting to the to the side, which is very similar to shifting, making it a case like this. In all these cases, I can replace these values with the larger block or the block of size eight. So what we observe is that since we have only powers of two, we can always replace some multiple values of smaller widths. That is, some multiple boxes of smaller widths with a larger box. Okay. And now you might think that uh, why are we doing this? Or like, what if we don't have enough? What if we have extra space? Something like that. Like if I have, let's say I have four, two, and one. Okay. And my Or four, two, and one, and my overall length is eight, and my next box is of size eight, right? Next box is of size eight. So you'll be like, uh, I cannot really replace these three with this eight because their summation is seven, right? But even though I cannot replace these three, I can always see that my eight can be below and my four, two, one can be above the eight. That is, at the lower level, I can always replace with the uh, block of the higher size. So whatever the optimal solution would be. i can always rearrange it i can always rearrange it to have the highest block size first then whatever left area the highest block size next then whatever left area highest block size something like that i can always replace the smaller block sizes at the bottom with the multiple smaller boxes at the bottom with a box of the larger length in our optimal solution so from here we get the intuition that the greedy idea will work because i can always replace some number of boxes with a box of larger width so let's move on to the code of the problem that is first we take number of test cases t as input then we take n and w as inputs as n is the number of boxes we have and w is the width of the container and we take input n and w and then we are taking a that is the vector a contains the widths of each of the small boxes okay after which this sorting is not required really over here i am creating a vector of width count this is basically going to be my frequency map of each of the widths now why am i doing this i could have directly taken a map but since i want to iterate in a reverse order i am using a vector and in this i am just using log power 2 of a of i so this log value for that i am incrementing the count so what i am doing is basically I have two. I have four. I have sixteen. Like I have different different powers of two, right? So two raised to one, two raised to two, two raised to four, something like that. So instead of 
storing a map with 2 raised to 1 as frequency 1, 2 raised to 2 as frequency 1, 2 raised to 4 as frequency 1. What I'm storing is, I'm storing the log value directly, log base 2 value directly. That is, I'm storing 1 has frequency 1, then 2 raised to 2 has frequency 1, 2 raised to 4 has frequency 1, right? This would be 1. So I'm storing the frequencies in a vector of length 21 phi because till 10 raised to 9 or sorry till 10 raised to 6 that we are given uh, our maximum value can go only go to 20 of our width right that is why I've created a vector of size 21 directly so I've created a vector of size 21 I'm taking the log base 2 of a of i and I'm incrementing the count for that value and then I have taken the height which will be my answer final height and I am create. I'm maintaining a count of used boxes. Now basically what does this represent? As soon as I have used up all the n boxes, I have completed my solution, right? I am just maintaining, it's not really required to maintain this but if we don't maintain this, we will need to always check our map or we will always need to check our uh, width count that it has become zero for all the widths or not, right? So instead of to avoid that hassle, I have just maintained the count of used boxes. I have taken a temp variable to be the width of our container. So for the current height, I have currently temp amount of width remaining. That is what we have, right? Initially, we have the entire width of the container. Starting from 20, I greater than or equal to 0, I minus minus. That is iterating in reverse order of the sizes of the box. I'll see if I have a box of the current size and the current size is less than the remaining size in the current level. That is less than or equal to temp. Then I'll reduce the remaining width of available in the current level. I will decrease the count of the boxes. That is, I'll decrease the count of available box of this size. And I'll increment the number of used boxes. And I'll also increment after each entire iteration over all the height, all the widths. I will increment the height of that we have used another level, right? We have used another height, another block of height. And finally, we are printing the height that we get after doing all the operations. So that's it for the solution. Let's discuss the time complexity of the solution. So the time complexity for this for loop will be order of n. That is, we're just taking the input. Then creating this will be order of. So over here, what are we doing? We're doing log base 2. See, we're running an order of n outer loop in which we are doing a log base 2 of e of i, right? So order of n into log of w right or log of small w that is given in a question or log of a of i let's just take it a of i as we have in our code right so whatever maximum a of i we can get that is still 10 raised to 6 this would be n into log of 10 raised to 6 right maximum uh, complexity of this loop and finally this while loop will run in how many iterations so maximum height that we can get basically in each iteration we are incrementing the height right so maximum height we can get can be only n right basically each of the box i have to place it on a new level or on a new height then the maximum height we can get will be only n right so this entire loop will run in only in order of n and there will be a additional of this for loop inside which runs 20 times so it will be n into 20 or we can say n into log of a of i since we have taken 20 as the upper bound of log of a of i right so that is the overall time complexity of the solution just becomes n into log of a of i, right? We have time complexity is equal to order of n into log of a of i. And for the space complexity of the solution, we have, we have taken a vector of length a as input and then we have this vector of length 21. So overall space complexity in the worst case can only go till order of n. So space complexity is order of n that we have here. So I hope you were able to understand the solution. Thank you. Mm -hmm.